Hi, daughter of God. If you have ever wondered about how a Christian pregnancy coaching session can help you, here's a sharing from someone who has benefited from a coaching session. If you would like to find out more, go to bit.ly slash Christian Pregnancy Coaching. That is B-I-T dot L-Y slash Christian Pregnancy Coaching for more details. I highly recommend meeting with Gladys if you're feeling fear or anxiety in your pregnancy. She offered a lot of tips to stay calm and be reassured that keeping faith is so important to yourself and your baby during your pregnancy. Welcome to the Christian Pregnancy Podcast. If you are ready to overcome stress and fear in pregnancy, childbirth, and postpartum, by applying God's Word in your life, you are in the right place. I believe that children are a gift from God and the journey into motherhood is meant to be blessed. However, we find ourselves full of stress and fear. As mummies to be or new mums, you are a daughter of God and Jesus has come that we may have abundant life and this abundant life includes joy and peace through your motherhood journey. I believe as mums, we have the authority to claim this promise from God. I'm Gladys, a mom of two who has been through the struggles of being pregnant, staying pregnant, followed by a challenging childbirth and postpartum. But God was and is my strength, and I am called to help you claim a pregnancy of purpose, a childbirth full of joy, and a motherhood of meaning. Put up your feet, grab your pickles or ice cream. It's time to dig into this journey with Jesus at the wheel. Hi, Daughter of God. Welcome back to the Christian Pregnancy Podcast. From this episode onwards, I would like to share with you my journey and I hope that we can learn from God together step by step as I walk through pregnancy to motherhood again. I'm not yet pregnant at the moment of this recording, but I really hope to be soon. The past half a year have been a roller coaster of craziness for me and my family, And now that we are a little more settled, the desire of wanting another baby in our family is coming up again. I have always wanted three or four children, but as I went through raising up my two children who are now six and four, I have found myself caught up in the day-to-day struggles and tasks that the thought of having even another one seemed impossible to me. But with God's help, All things are possible and I am reminded again and again that with God's strength, with God as my strength, I can do anything that He calls me to. So sometime about a month ago, I had heard in my heart God's confirmation that the time is right to start trying again for another baby. And after much prayer and discussion with my husband, we both are on the same page and are preparing ourselves ourselves to try for another baby soon. Another thing that I felt God prompted me was to share this journey right here on this podcast so you have the front row seats to hear about my journey as I go through it and honestly it's terrifying for me to be so vulnerable and open about this because right now I'm not even pregnant yet and it is just the preparation stage and nothing is confirmed and I don't even know how my story will turn out eventually. But one thing I know is that when I hear God speak, I will do all I can to obey what He has shown me, no no matter how insane it sounds. And so here I am sharing this with you on this podcast, rewiring this podcast again after so many months. So for today, let's take a look at Psalm 127 together. First, let me read it. Psalm 127 Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior 
are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Psalm 127 So the first the first verse says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand and watch in vain. And I felt that this spoke to me a lot about the current situation I'm in. I don't know about you. Yeah, but for me, myself, um, in my stage of preparing myself for pregnancy, um, yeah, in reality, it actually applies to every stage of life that you may be facing, whether you are in the midst of pregnancy, caring for a newborn, teaching a toddler. Um, the question that I felt is that are we allowing God to work in and through our lives? That's the question that I felt that we could ask ourselves. So this is something that I have to remind myself and check on, check in on myself and ask God to search and check my heart. Am I just seeking to fulfill what I want without God's approval and without God's direction? It may be even for something good, like in my situation, one thing, another baby. But am I trying to achieve it with my own human strength? and human wisdom and human effort without trusting and relying on God? I find that it is so easy to start relying on God, start out relying on God. And then as time goes on, as discouragements come, as difficulties set in, you might find yourself taking charge more and more until one day you notice that God isn't even in the picture. And that has happened to me many times. So that is something that I really do not want uh, to happen again for myself and also for you. Am I allowing God to build my house? Are you allowing God to build your house and watch over your city? I felt that the first step is to even recognize it and say, Yes, God, I want you to be the builder of my house. I want you to be the builder of my life. And I want you, God, to be the one who watches over me and my life. Without you, God, this house has no foundation. Without you, God, this city is not truly safe. So I come to a place of surrender and say, God, would you forgive me for trying to build this house on my own, for using my own human designs and human plans? that I have made. I gather all these up and I place them into your hands and I trust in your perfect timing and plan. Would you have your way in my life, God? If this resonates with you in your spirit, I encourage you to pause this if you can and spend a few minutes telling God how you want him to be the builder of your house to be the one who is in charge. Do take some time surrendering all your plans to Him and choose to let His will be done in your life. It may seem difficult and it is definitely a sacrifice to choose His ways instead of your own ways. But having done that many times from personal experience, I want to assure you that it is totally worth it to choose His ways and his will over our ways and our will. So for the second verse in Psalm 127, In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. I found that this verse speaks about the contrast of someone who chooses to go their own way, which leads to doing things in vain, and toiling. And it contrasts that against someone who is able to surrender to God and trust Him. Therefore, that person is able to rest. Restedness in God and restedness in Christ is a place where every child of God should be. The world seems to know that restedness and peace of mind is important too. That's why there's there's many, many things that 
people do just to gain the peace of mind. But there is a better way. The better way is to trust in Jesus, to trust Him to lead you step by step. Even in my preparation to become pregnant again, I sometimes find myself literally rising up early and staying up late, uh, toiling for food to eat when I do that out of fear of a lack of provision to, to raise a larger family. Just saying this out loud makes it sound so silly, but it happens to be the reality that I find myself in. And God sees all of that, and I know that He wants to grant me rest, and He wants to grant you rest, no matter what season you are in. Know that our God is the God of peace, and He is able to grant you rest. Would you be willing to choose to come to Him, to lay down your burdens and worries, and take on His peace and rest? Now, verses 3 to 5 says, Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Now, this is a section which is very familiar that children are a blessing from God. They are a gift and a reward from God. And it is not given, the children are not given, the reward is not given just because we deserve it. I understand that these verses may cause pain to those, uh, to some of you who are hearing it, to those who are still trying for their first child, to those who do not have any children for various reasons. I know this because I was once there too. I want to share what I discovered in seeking the Lord at the time before I had children and kept losing my pregnancies to miscarriages and I was wondering why I wasn't worthy enough to receive this blessing and reward from Him. So what God showed me is that this verse that says that children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. It doesn't say that children are the heritage and the reward from him. So it says children are a heritage and a reward, meaning that there are other blessings and other rewards that we receive from God. And children are just one of the many blessings, many rewards that we get from God. So to those of you who have yet to have children or who do not have children, If you happen to be listening to this, I want to assure you that God sees you and God knows what you are going through and His many rewards and many blessings are freely available to you as His child. And going back to what the Word says, truly, the baby that's growing in you and the children that you have, they are a blessing and a reward from God. As recipients of that blessing, we can only say, thank you, God. Thank you so much, God, with a grateful heart and to do the best that we can as we partner God to raise the children that He has entrusted to us. He knows what's best for us and He knows what's best for our children. So would you also entrust your children to Him and seek Him in all things? In all things, all your worries, all your concerns, all your fears about raising your children. For me, in preparation to be pregnant again, there are many decisions that I have to make and I choose to walk through these decisions relying on God's wisdom and not out of a fearful heart relying on man's knowledge. I will share more about this in a future episode. And for now, let me close in prayer. Dear God, thank you so much that you have designed us to rely on you. For you alone are our Creator and our Heavenly Father who knows all things. Thank you, Lord, that you love us and you are able to provide the best for us. 
help us to rely on you in all that we do in our lives so that we do not do anything or everything in vain by our own strength. Please come and be the builder of our house and the watcher of our cities, our whole lives, including our children's lives. We need you, God. And thank you, God, for your perfect peace and the rest that you have given to us, your children. Lord, would you bless my dear listeners with your peace that surpasses all understanding as they surrender their worries to you. And thank you, God, for the children that we have and the children that we are going to have. Help us to recognize them as gifts and blessings from you, especially when things are difficult. Help us to see all your hand, all the works of your hand in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. So that's all for today's episode. I hope that it has blessed you as much as it has blessed me to be able to share this with you. If you have any questions that you would like me to respond in a in a podcast episode or anything that you would like to share with me at all, you can go to bit.ly slash speak to Gladys to leave me a voice message. So I'm looking forward to your questions, your sharings, and even if you would just like to say hi, I'd be so happy to hear from you. You can go to bit.ly slash speak to Gladys. That is B-I-T dot L-Y slash speak to Gladys. So I'll see you in the next episode. God bless. If this podcast has blessed you, help you or challenge you, please share it with another mom to be or mom and leave a written review on Apple Podcasts. This helps inspire a generation of kingdom mothers and future world changers. Also, come join the Christian Pregnancy Facebook group at bit.ly slash Christian Pregnancy Group. That is B-I-T dot L-Y slash Christian Pregnancy Group. See you in the next episode. May God bless your pregnancy, childbirth, and postpartum journey with His joy and peace always.